Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be working on a on a Sherwood. I think this thing is a CD3050 um, CD player, and I just turned it on now. And this is what's wrong with it: the tray goes in and out, and it doesn't really want to close all the way. So let me go ahead and open this thing up. And here we go. We can hear it doing something. That's good. It's making a whirring sound. I think this thing has a belt in it. I'm going to go ahead and check that first. I got to um, take this thing out here. Now I'm in the process of pulling off this clamp right here. It's held in by two Phillips head screws, one on each side. But they're kind of tough. So I had to make sure I had an exact fit. If not, I'm going to strip the screw out. So in order to remove the tray, what we have to do is like take a screwdriver, push it down here. There's like a tab that we have to push down. If not, this whole tray, you won't be able to move that that way. It's going to, it comes out toward the front of the unit. So I can't show this on camera. I got to push down and then pull at the same time, I think. So it looks like I can't push this all the way over to take it up take this thing off because well, I think what this is happening here is the this piece here is hitting the motor spindle here at the end so I think what I have to do is um take these two screws off and that drops the spindle down and out of the way. That way I can slide all of this over. That's, it's kind of a hassle because now I'm getting deeper and deeper into it. So this is the other side. Now I'm in the process of uh, bending these tabs back. So the whole thing comes out. And that's of course without trying to snap anything. Oh, next I've got the mechanism turned over and I'm going to take this screw out and then try to take this whole thing out at an angle or something. So sure enough, prying up on this end has taken this out of this depression here and there. Now, it's finally broke free. Now I can turn it over carefully. And then take the belt off. Now that leaves us with this here. And. Um, I think I can. Take the belt out. And. There it actually is. It's totally hardened up for starters here. Let me see what size that belt is. And while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and clean the here the optical lens. It's supposed to be nice and shiny, and it's always got a little bluish tinge to it. Um, of course, it really sucks if it came from a heavy smoker's home because then you probably have some kind of film on there now what I'm going to use I'm just going to use a regular cotton swab here ideally would be something that's lint free that doesn't leave any kind of residue and I'm going to use uh, just pure alcohol to clean to just rub across here and of course I can't do that too I can't put too much pressure because this is on the spring and um, you don't want to break that because then you'll have to go ahead and order a new optical, uh, basically optical pickup. And this one doesn't seem to be too, doesn't seem to be too dusty here. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just rub light across there. It wasn't really dirty, but um, since I'm going to, I've got the thing open now and normally this is not exposed you're not going to see this with the unit when you use the unit 
I don't really think it's I don't really think it's um, dirty here and again this has got to be like a real light touch that's how I do it at least and that was that here's a closer look at that belt I don't think I can really zoom zoom that close in with this camera this belt is actually the size is stated in the service manual and it's supposed to be diameter it's supposed to, it is um, 24 so I'm thinking that's 24 millimeters I guess it's about almost about an inch diameter and it's supposed to be one times one meaning of course this is a I think this is a square belt and the uh, thickness of the belt here being one millimeter on each side but I you could probably get a, I don't think it has to be square you could probably get away with something uh, I don't know about using an o-ring since I don't have an o-ring kit anymore or else I'll try that I would try that out well that might work oh and th this one you can see it's all I don't, you probably can't see this here it's all it's glazed over and and this is what I was battling with earlier. You see here, this is the, I guess you'd call it the tray motor right here. A little DC motor. I think it says on here 5.9 volts. And, of course, this here um, drives a belt, which drives gear, which moves the, which moves the tray in and out. And it also moves the whole here, the optical, uh, pick up here section the whole clamp so it moves that up and down too and here is the um you would, i guess you'd call it the uh the, the open close switch the tray open close switch i thought i could maybe get to it to to clean it or something but i don't see any actually any way of doing that and i certainly don't want to take it apart I could probably go ahead and check it with the uh, check it with the ohmmeter, but since the door is actually the tray is actually working, going open and close, just not all the way. Um, I don't think I don't think this is any kind of a I don't think this is any kind of a problem. Also, I didn't touch the here. I didn't touch nothing that had to do with the optical with the optical pickup here. You don't want to put your fingers here around the uh, around the metal parts. Ideally, um, I guess you would use a um, ground band and put that around your put that around your wrist and then um, connect that to a ground. I've got one somewhere. I don't even know where it's at. I, d I did after I worked on the last CD player. I did order one from China, and now of course now I can't uh, find it.